Hey, welcome back. So I've decided to add a little bit, whoop, add a little bit of wire and embellish a little bit more around this pendant. And I've got about 13 inches of 18 gauge round soft copper wire. And there's a lot of ways that you can attach an extra wire, but I'm just going to do it right back here for convenience. And I'll center the wire right behind the bale and hold it really tight and I'll just go once all the way through it. It's a real simple way to do it. Keep your leading wire straight and push a little and pull a little. And get it seated, you know, down far enough so that you don't interfere with any chain. When you get close you might have to get some pliers because this is bigger wire. Got some flat nose here to help me along. Okay. I've just got one nice loop there. Still got plenty of space for chain. Nothing interferes with the front. And I've got these wires in position to, you know, do some additional fancy things if I want to. So if I want to put another little bit of a loop right here. I can do that. You have to hold it, it's a little bit weird, but you can also use your plier. Make sure it doesn't interfere with the bail, but if it does, remember I'm probably now going to have to put a jump ring in here. Yeah if I want that little design to live right there. Ooh, I'm going to pinch it a little tighter. And I might do the jump ring just for fun anyway. I don't like to worry about stuff. So I'm just going to bring it along the side here. You can use your finger to help you shape the wire. I might just drop it to the back and make this a little bit taller. I wanted that just to go a little bit taller. So I took it from the back, put pressure in the front here and just gave it another little bit. Okay, a little swoop right there. I'm going to bring this wire to the back. Don't worry about this side for now. Just keep it out of your way. Just make this one nice. Nice little curve. Gives, you know, just a little extra something to the back. Plus, you now have a back wire in the event that you wanted to add any, like a, a moon or something back here. And we might do that with this top one. We'll see when I get there. So I'm just going to make it swoop down and cross uh, this bottom bit right here. Nice little slope. Don't let it interfere with your spiral and the way it looks in the front. You know, so just use your nails and adjust. So when I look through, it's a nice swoop, but it doesn't give me any extra lines. Okay. You have a little space, you can loop through. You can do a back bend. You know, whatever you want to do here. I think what I'm going to do is loop through there. So I'm just going to make a little pre-bend here to mark where it needs to be. It's still nice and loose, so don't stress yourself. Let it go. Take a long bend. Come through this little opening if yours, you know, is still wide enough that you can get a wire through here. Ooh. Push a little bit. Pull a little bit. work it through. So it comes out right about there. Got nice lines. Well, we can put some weave in there even if we want to. We'll see what we do there. But we've got nice lines. 
So I'm going to make just a very controlled turn to the right here. I'm holding it. I'm not really letting it move in the back. I'm just making a nice deliberate turn right there so it has a little bit of a point. Okay, see that? And now here I've got some messy tree business and I've got a nice space so I can do a little spiral inward if I want to. You don't have to. You can come back up the top but just to be fancy, I might do something like this and I can even come out a little bit. Just doing a little pre-bend with my wire to see what I want. About this much. And I can hammer it right there or I can spiral it and cover up some of this little bit here. Just gonna hold it, give some turn and see what I like. Oh, that's good. I like that. I like that. It's not exactly, you know, perfect. It doesn't have to be gives me three spirals here too which is great okay I'm keeping it I'm gonna hammer it so the easy way is here's your hinge make sure nothing moves because we haven't tied it I'm just gonna bend it out right here don't ruin anything just enough to hammer it I'll go off screen to hammer since we know how to do that I'll cut this little bit at an angle make it cute like that one alright I went off camera hammered it and now I'm just gonna I'm still holding everything in the back because it's not tied together yet and I'm just gonna motion this back into place so I have the opportunity to cover up some tree roots there you can drop a couple cute beads there if you need to and now I have a reason to take you know maybe a little bit of wire over that I probably could have covered those more but I like the way that goes so I left it <laughs> You can do whatever you want. Okay, so up here I'm going to get this back under control. It's a little bit loose. I'm holding my peaks together here. I'm going to squeeze this loop carefully. Don't wreck your frame. Okay, and I'm going to put a little more turn to the back on this one. It's a little bit tough wire, a little tight space right there. Plus it's, you know, you want to make it look nice. Just got a little crisscross in there, that's right. You can do yours the way you like. I left a little bit of frayed wire right there. Just going to cut that. and tuck it in there. I bet you guys are wondering if I've shown you the big secret yet. And the answer is no. <laughs> so at the end of this video I'll show it to you. So we have this other wire. I want to swing it over here to the left. I just got it over here a little bit so that I can make a nice graceful back bend here. There we go. I got a little spot there if I want to tie something on. I may or may not. Okay, so I'll swing this, hold this up here if you're doing this and make sure it swings out where you want it to. I didn't want to come all the way up here, I just wanted to have a nice... So I used my plier and I, I just took it a little bit more. Okay. And now I can hold it and shape it down this side. Get a nice slope. Get a nice bend on it. And do whatever you'd like. If you want to put a, a little cutie 
something extra. I'm just going to make it travel down this little row here. So I'm trying to cover a little bit of my back wires. You may not need to. Um, so if I'm traveling down, I might as well try to cover some of these, right? Kind of sandwich these in here. I need my bent nose. So I'm going to get my bent nose and just make a little correction there. I didn't like the way that was sloping. That's better. Okay, so now I'm down back here to the bottom. I've got another little extra layer for comfort right here. And then I have a, a little place that I can tie on, you know, some additional wire. Um, and I also have just a little layer. I know it doesn't look like it, but you've kind of given the back just another little layer in case you want to, you know, put a moon in there or something. And we might do that still, I said. Okay, so I'm going to just hold everything. Certainly we'll need to tie it. And right here, I need to decide what I'm going to do. I might dive in here. I still have a little bit of space right there, and you may or may not. So I'm going to take a long bend out, come through the bottom, help myself through, just position that wire. So I've got a little bit more protecting those, those wires. And now I've got this bit right here that I can do design with. You still have to hold it a little bit because it's we haven't flipped it over yet. So, so when you have your, your curve nice, come over here, bend this wire down. Okay. Take your plier just below that first tip. Hold steady. Turn up. Turn it out. Go over that other one if you want to, a little bit. You can do yours shorter or longer, whatever you feel like. Give a little tap. I like that. And I'm just going to do another little curly with this one. So I'm going to hold it right here, bend it out, use the pad of my finger. Make a nice curve back in. I like that. I like that a lot. I might even hammer that a little bit. And I'm going to bring this one up. Kind of into this little space right here. So I'll hammer this nice curve. All right, so I took it off camera, did a nice little hammer on it. Just make sure all of this is flowing nicely. Just motion it to the back how you like it. Ooh, I like that a lot, just a little bit there. Not too much. Okay, hold everything steady because we still haven't, you know, tied all this wire that's come from the other side. If you feel like you can't hold it all together, you know, take a break right here and start doing wraps with 28 or some other kind of texture if you want to. And I'm still trying to figure out if I can get this moon on here. Let's see what I do with the moon. Here it is. So here's our nice moon. Ooh, it's beautiful. Okay. It's a freshwater pearl and it is drilled. So I have the opportunity to kind of snuggle it up right there or in the middle or somewhere in between if I want. And I have this wire here that I can, you know, buffer it with a little bit if I want to. It's kind of nice off to the side a little bit. Oh, I kind of like it like that. So I'll put it right there. Let's see if I can get this one enough around it. You might give yourself more like 14 inches if you're doing this moon. 
And you can always add more wire too. So I'll take it around. If you need to tie yours on first, it might be easier. I just want to get a, a look to see. It's about here that it's going to go, so I'm just going to come around. So do you see what I mean by giving it a little buffer? If you let it just hang out there on its own, what happens is that, you know, in time, as it's being worn, certainly it'll come loose. So if you want to make this a reversible pendant, you know, you can do some more cute stuff here or just clean it up a little bit more from the back. Or don't make it reversible, but just use, use this to kind of get your moon and I think that's what we're gonna do right there so pretty okay so whew. so kind of you know hopefully <laughs> hopefully you were able to do that okay let me just make sure it doesn't change now that's fantastic okay I love it so I'm gonna tie this moon on Ooh. I'm going to get 26 gauge wire, I think, this time. You can also use 28 gauge like we've been using. I think I'm just going to switch it up. Go a little thicker so that I have something a little bit thicker in this moon. And I'm going to take 12 inches because I want to do some coiling. And I'll just pass through here. If you want to do anything to this little end, do it now before you start tying your moon on. I'm just going to turn it inward slightly. I'm not going to do anything to it. I've put my bead through the moon. And I'm just going to position it here in my wire. Make sure that my curve is where I want it. There, that's how I want it, right in there. Okay. I'm going to get center in my wire. I'm going to stay calm, everybody. And I'm going to see if I can um, tie onto here. I'm going to motion my holes, turn them so that they both touch wire, so that I'm not stretching over anything. You know, and if, if it's easier for you to come away from the frame first, do that. So I'm just going to do a few wraps kind of got my finger in there. So there goes one. I'll do just a couple to get it started, but I might coil down here. I'm certainly going to attach, you know, right there. Then now I'll do the other side, but before I attach, I'm going to do the other side. Make sure I've got some comfort space. Pull any slack out of your wire. Make sure your moon's in there. Might be a little tight getting through here. I'm going to use the open side of this wire. work it so that there's no slack. 26 is a little hardier than 28. So I went 26. While I'm here and it's a difficult spot, I'm going to get my coils in with this one. So I'm doing three, four, five, six. Whew. Seven. That's enough. Make sure you look in the front. 
I can attach behind this tree and that it won't be unsightly there. You see? That looks so cute. So I can attach to the frame back here, um, you know, maybe on this spiral arm right here and not have it be showing in the front. So you just want to be mindful of that. If I need to go further so that I can grab it back there, I might do that actually because I want it inward just a little bit more. For mine, you do what's what's good for yours. Ooh, it's a tight little spot. I'm going to try to get two or three more wraps. And I have actually that little extra hook. Look how convenient. Look what happened. The hook from the other spiral. I can use it. And I happened to grab it by accident. So there it is. I got it. I'm attached. Whew. Okay. I'm going to leave this here for a minute, catch my breath, and work on this one. <laughs> Make sure that I come in further so I'm not showing anything. Make sure that I shift this before I wrap too much. More of it. Get it back up onto the frame. Make sure that everything is in position so that when I look in the front, I love it. It's okay if you see a little something. I see a little bit of wrap right there, and that's okay. I could leave it out more. It doesn't bother me, though. kind of looks like just a piece of the tree, so I might just leave it. Because I kind of like this in a little bit more. Yeah. You'll find the perfect pos position for yours. Okay, so while I'm here, I've got frame wires right here that I can grab and attach to. Make sure that this arm is in where you want it to be. And if I need to come down a little bit more, for me I do, so that I can attach a little closer. I'm going to make some clean wraps coming down. I'm still just holding on to the moon to make sure that it doesn't shift. The arm still wants to shift. Make some wraps. And then right here, when I get to a comfortable spot, I just push that a little bit. I'm going to catch that frame wire, the second one. To land that arm in position. make two, maybe even three. Nice wraps right there. Then if you want to, you know, you can wrap down for some texture. If you don't want to, you can find a nice couple of wraps right here and end it. I might do a deliberate few. Oh, I like it. Maybe just that one and then I don't have to see it. Love it. Okay. Look down and make sure the moon is protected. That this wire is, you know, around it. That it can't bump or go anywhere. Okay, just check over everything. Make sure you love it. Make sure that there's no funky wire bubbles anywhere. I like that a lot. Make sure it's nice and pretty. Keep it neat. Make a few decorative coils. I like that. Okay, and maybe here a little bit. So enjoy it, and uh, I'm just going to finish this up. You can add wire all kinds of different ways for a different look each time. You just use the base tree design that we did in the first video, 
and then you can make a curly wire add-on to your liking or not um, and have something unique with every one of them. Okay, so I'm going to proceed and show you this secret I've been talking about. Okay, that's pretty good. Looks so cute. I love it. Okay, so for the most part, I think that this is pretty clean, right? But if you needed to do, and I might, um, a little bit of tacking down here and there, a couple of ideas for you epoxy lovers out there is that you can dab with some clear epoxy on just on a toothpick, the slightest dot on some of these frayed ends, right? Or, you know, if I know all of our ends are on this side, but just in case you have, you know, some messy business or some thick business down here, you can dab a little bit of clear epoxy if that stitching we did didn't work in the first video. The other thing you can use is new jeweler's glue. Let me get it. This is the stuff, super new glue. And it's it's like basically like super glue, right? Except that um, it's it's for jewelry. It's clear, it won't yellow over time. And you don't ever dip anything, including epoxy, on top of your jewelry. So I would never do this, right? What you do is you get a little plastic, because super glue doesn't stick to plastic, and you dollop a spot like that onto your plastic, and then you make a little wire spoon or a little toothpick spoon like this. Just a tiny little thing. You get some glue, and then you come over your bits that are fraying. Before you do this super glue trick, however, and less is more, so I would just take and, you know, literally do like that onto some of the cut ends from the front here. And I'm not demonstrating on the front because I'm not actually ready for it yet. But, you know, where I left a big spot, I would just barely do like that and get a little bit of this jeweler's glue on there. Now, before you do that, if you intend to patina this tree, um, once you seal it with the super glue on those ends, it makes a permanent spot. So if you patina the tree, that spot won't take a patina, right? So you just keep that in mind. That's why I say less is more. And uh, try to get really discreet, really discreet taps. Like those little frayed ends right there will never go anywhere. And all I'm doing is putting a little bit of this jeweler's glue underneath. So I can still patina if I want to. I want to wash this and, you know, get, get my hands and, and the process of making it off of the tree and get it clean. Um, and then I would probably do this after it were all washed and clean. Okay, same thing for even a little odd, like that little wire that I cut. Take this jeweler's glue. Put a little tiny spot on there. Take not your best plier, but any, you know, and give a little, tiny little tap. Make sure it's settled and it will never let go from there. Same if you have any little things poking out. You know, you always got that one or two that you can never settle. So there's your trick. Here's the product again. All right? You can probably find it online anywhere. You can probably find it at the local hobby store. Bead stores sell it. And uh, it's probably, I don't know, two or three, maybe five dollars now. I don't know. But not very much money. I wouldn't use super glue unless it's somewhere that, well, probably on the tree it won't matter. This one won't turn yellow over time. It'll stay clear, so it says. Uh, I've, I've never had an issue with that, so that's what I use. All right, you guys, this is so cute now. And I'll put my little chain back through here. It still fits, so that's great news. Oop. 
even after the added wire. And that is even more now. So beautiful. And I think the back's pretty good. You know, just make sure that it can be worn comfortably and that, that little pearl won't ever fall out if you do this. Okay? And that this wire won't pull out. So tie. Okay, so much fun. I love this one. I hope you do too. I'll see you for the next one. And that'll be next month.